Hey, what's up, guys? Chaos Theory here, and today um, we are going to show you the Desolation Run. Um, the Desolation Run is going to be entirely different from anything else you've done before. Um, we all know, like, if you've been to the Desolation, you know um, the sulfur around here. Uh, if you go into it, you die. And the way that you counteracted that was getting into a worm, because that could travel through the sulfur, fine. But if you're running other people that haven't completed Gate of Desolation yet, which you have to go through, what is it, Corna, then uh, all the Vabby missions, and then then you get to De Gate of Desolation, which takes a long time to get, um, they can't use the worm. And because they can't, you can't use the worm while they're in your party. So to be able to run them, you cannot use the worm, and you need to get through the Desolation. Um... There's been many other ways before to do it. Uh, two ways that I remember is one, um, using, uh, what is it, Lively was Naomi, and just uh, dying, respawning, dying, respawning, and just inching your way over the Sulfurous Waste. Um, it's not very effective. Um, another way was to have two people and then they would both use uh, Unyielding Aurora, and then they would kind of like frog leap each other, um, which you need, it's a duo, I mean, it's not very effective as well. Um, it's better than the Lively Was Naomi way, because you can go faster through it, but again, it's a duo, so, um, but um, a man named uh, what is it? Uh, God of Fissures, which is a very good runner, um, and Miss Dervish, uh, they found out a glitch um, in the sulfur that allows any uh, profession that can go 50 IAS for a long time to run it through. Um, one second. Anyways, um, let's see, so, the glitch I'm going to show you now. So, um, I'm, God of Fissures, uh, explained it to me very well, and I'm going to try and explain it as well as he did, but I might miss a few things. So, if you have any, uh, questions about it, I'd PM Miss Dervish or God of Fissures, because... They know a lot more about the Desolation Run than I do. Um, so, what do you need to know about the Sulfur? Is that um, when you get onto the Sulfur, it takes 0 to 2 seconds for that effect to get on you. It's the guy with a uh, hand choking him and everything. Um, when that gets on you, you have 3 seconds before you die to 3. So remember that, three seconds before you die, once that effect's on you. You have zero, um, like 0 0.1 to 2 seconds uh, before it gets uh, applied on you. Now normally, that would be nowhere near enough to be able to run the desolation. So let's try to get her closer. Yeah, okay. Um, so let me just show you. So, like, I'm going to try and get as far as I can into the sulfur. So, let's go. Okay, so that was pretty good. I mean, that was a lucky shot. Um, let's see if I can resurrect myself here. Alright. Um, probably should have brought, like, a rebirth or something, but, um... Anyways, um, so you saw I did pretty well, but what you gotta realize is that that is a one in a million shot. So like right now, I didn't get as far. So it's inconsistent. So let me just get back here in a second. So a way to, to drastically um, let you be able to get really, really long distances consistently 
is through a glitch that God of Fissures uh, figured out. Um, so let me show you that right now. So what the glitch is, is that you go into the sulfur, wait until that gets on, wait three seconds, and then you jump. And see how far I got? Actually... So, you get a lot farther, and it's a lot more consistent data. Like, it's a lot more consistent in, um, your run. So, this is a crucial, uh, element to be able to run the Sulfurous Wastes. So, remember that. You have two seconds before, um that is applied on you then you have three seconds before you die now the three seconds also applies to something else um, let me just show you like the beginning part of the run so I can just show you a few things um, so I'll just put her here just in case if I die because like I said I'm not that good at this run so I'll just show you so dash okay now it's on me you get on the um, safe spots uh, I should probably talk to you about safe spots safe spots are areas in the sulfur that um, you can be on without it going so if you get on one of these safe spots and wait until the effect ends um, it'll go off it goes off in three seconds so just think about it if it goes off while you're in the sulfur you die if you're if it goes off without the sulfur it just it goes away so remember that okay so I'm just gonna walk to the next area and she boosted me which is not really necessary but okay and then this next area um so you just dash one two three okay you're safe and now this is the first uh, point where I'm going to show you the um the glitch so get it on you one two three see how much distance i got there and now this area because there's so much uh good ground you can just run through it like anything else and another safe spot so safe spots if you see you see the grayed out area those are safe spots um the only thing if it's a solid gray area it's a safe spot um there are some areas like the one above that's kind of mixed and those are kind of sketchy because it could be a safe spot or it could not be um this one is especially touchy because um let me just show you you have to be in the front or else you, um it will be put on you like if i move back it gets put on me so you have to be on the tip for this one okay for this one get it on you two three oh I missed so again it has to be very very exact if you get the timing wrong you'll either not be able to have enough time to get to the next area or you will die like I did right here so uh other than that, I think that's all we need to... Actually, there's a couple more things I need to teach you. Um, so, that is the basic idea of how to run the Sulfurous Wastes and a lot of the other areas in the Desolation is by using that glitch. Um, once you become... Once you master that glitch, you can make um, your run so you can time when it's on you and off you so well that it'll look like you're normally running. So, like... Um, Miss Dervish, when she runs, you'll see. Um, she just goes and goes and goes. Boom. Over here. Over here. I mean, she covered this entire area in like two minutes, I think. Anyways. Um, so, the other one that you need to know is the alkali. Okay. Um, so, this is the alkali pan. You need to... The thing that you need to learn is that 
there are safe spots within the sulfur, and you'll see why later. Once we get through that portal of awesomeness and stuff. Alright. So first of all, let us run. And one thing you need to make note, tell everybody you're running to go this way. Because if they activate that resurrection shrine, the entire run will be um, messed up. So... Um... What you need to realize... Well, first of all, I'm just going to show you... Um... So yeah, this is there's a lot of safe spots as I remember. They're the great there's the gray area or the dark gray. It's like hardened lava, I guess you could say. Um that's a safe spot. This, this is a safe spot. Another safe spot. Another safe spot. And yet another safe spot over here. <sighs> well, you get the idea. Um all this area it's safe spot um and that is a key thing to know for the alkali pan you'll see it a lot better when you see um Miss Dervish run um the last thing I need to talk to you guys about is um there is a text mod which um God of Fissures made which helps a lot when you're starting out it's a text mod where it makes um all the, uh, the bad sulfur the stuff that will kill you um, it turns it all red. Um, so, just to give an example, it'll turn this to this. Um, so, as you can see, um, it shows all the bad areas. So I can see, like, this is a good area. Once I t step on the red, I get sulfurous haze. So, this is a very helpful thing to have. Especially when you're just starting out and you need to learn the route and everything. And also this better explains how there is a lot of areas in the middle of the alkali pan that are uh, safe spots. So this is very helpful to know. And there's a worm. It's uh, another thing to know. Oh, wow, I've never seen two worms. And I'm about to get owned. Maybe not. Just get out of the house their way. Um, so... Yeah, so I'll kill myself here. So, um, other than that, I think that's all we need to cover right now. So, I'll take it over to Miss Dervish. Uh, okay, so you want to start. Uh, this is a Dervish running, so um, she has permanent 50 IAS. Um, the runs are a little harder if you uh, are an assassin, but it shouldn't make much of a difference. Um, so right here you can see like um remember that she is a really good runner she's pro so she's going to be going a lot faster and taking shortcuts uh just go to my uh if just look at my the intro part of this and you'll be able to just go through that route that's an easier route um it's not as fast but it's better if you want to figure out where you want like if you want to figure out the general idea of the run. Um, once you get that down, then start using these shortcuts. So here's the touchy place. This is where I died. Um, you want to go over to here, this area. It's a safe spot. And then from here, it's pretty easy. You have a little bend over here. Get to here. And you're pretty much done with this part of the area. Um, up here, you have a mandragore spawn. Uh, you can simply just ignore them. They're not that hard. Um, you don't even need shadow form or anything. You can just run right through them. They'll do a little bit of damage, but it shouldn't kill you. You just see right here. Alright, the second part, you want to stay to the left. Um, she's going to take a shortcut up here. You can go all the way around that bend area, or you can take the route she takes, which the where she jumps to the island and then jumps back. It's much easier to do that on a dervish. And it's actually recommended to do on a dervish, but uh, 
Okay, up here, um, you need to dash and or uh, pious haste, and then you need to shadow step. Um, because of that, you won't die, and um, uh, you won't need to use the glitch, and it'll just make for a faster run. Up here, you need to use shadow form, because these guys can uh, slow you down and do a serious damage, and it's just not good. Up here, you want to get the, um, just dash over there. Uh, stop there, and then you just want to follow up this island, go to that ridge, then just follow it all the way around to remains of Salaja. And here you are. So that's the first part of the run. Um, just keep watching that over and over again until you memorize the spots, because that's crucial. Okay, so this part is Joko's domain. Um, she takes a little bit of a shortcut, um, uh, but um, the easiest route is to just stay to the right and just stay to the right of the map the entire time. Um, it's a lot slower, but it's a lot easier as well. Uh, there is a what is it? There's an awakened boss that has uh, a couple knockdown skills but you can usually avoid him if you time it correctly and like I said this parts um, really hard to do uh, but it is a lot faster so once you feel comfortable with everything else you can try this route and whenever you go into an awakened group um, you'll need uh, uh, what is it uh, I'm unstoppable because they have signet of judgment okay now you just walk up here and you will be going into basalt grotto which is the outpost that links the desolation to Vabi The rest of this is is it's pretty easy. So once you get here, you've made it to Basalt Grotto. Um, the part in Vabi, it's pretty straightforward. I mean, there's no desolation in there, so that part's over. But the guys in Vabi are very heavy hitters, so um, I would recommend using Perma Shadow Form and our sounds here. Um. I'd recommend using perma shadow form until you mem like you get used to the the mobs in here. Then you can just um, just have uh, not use perma, or you can just not use it. Um, if you get good enough, you can do what she. Uh, well, it's a he in real life, but I'm just gonna say she because the character is a she. So um, uh, you can do what she's doing. Um, just have a lot of shadow steps, no shadow form like wastrels collapse and everything uh. so yeah up here um... these guys are heavy hitters as you will see so in that area it would have you wouldn't have taken as much damage if you were using a um, shadow form. Also, I would highly recommend a shield and caster weapon set here because you will need the defense. Actually, that applies to all runs in the desolation. So yeah, you'll go. You'll keep going. You'll go south, south, east, I believe, um, into the outpost Jenner's Horde. It's normally a mission, but because you haven't completed the quest up to it, it'll be an outpost. And that is your link to um, the next area. I forget what it's called, but um, in that outpost, you get uh, T Hark Orchard and Kodash Bazaar.
And once you make it there, you're pretty much done with the run. Um, there's a couple of mobs that you'll need to worry about, but after you get to T Hark Orchard, there's no mobs at all. Jenner's Horde, and she skips the outpost. Post it's called the Forum Highlands. Um, so, um, this part's just a uh, short walk. Um, if you're good at it and you use Shadow Steps, you can do it in like 40 seconds. Actually, it's a very simple run. Your T Hark Orchard. She's going to change her skills to all uh, friendly NPC shadow steps. Uh, this is because there's no enemies, so uh, she'll put complete um, friendly NPC shadow steps so that she will be able to move very, very quickly. Um, you don't need to do that, it just makes running through that little star shaped area you'll see on the mission map much faster. Um, it's actually kind of insane how fast she does it, so you'll see in a second. Alright, so by this point you have made it to Kodash Bazaar. So congratulations. Um Yeah. There's not that many people who want this run, but the people who do want it will pay a lot of money for it. Because most people who want to get to the Kodash Bazaar are the people who want um to get Vabian armor and they have to have a lot of money to get that and yeah, so, there you go. Have fun. Now here, we are going to be, uh, this is a reset to Remains of Solid Jaw out to Joko's Domain. Uh, in this um, part, we're going to run to the Bone Palace. Uh, because, um, because you, um, uh, can't get through uh, without, um, without beating all the torment claws and everything that block the entrance, you need to kill everybody to be able to get into the bone palace and everything. Um, you have to go around uh, through the shattered ravines, which she's going to show you up here, and um, Uh, zoned out there, sorry. Um, you want to go through the Shattered Ravines down to the Alkali Pan, and then you'll go down to the uh, Bone Palace. So these guys, um, they sap a lot of energy from you, so be careful of that. I think it's what is called Quicksand, I think. But anyways, they sap energy, and as you can see, the energy gets really low during this run. So you'll see right here, the Bone Palace is right there, but she can't go through there because, um, uh, it's not the best to run through. You'll need the worm for it. So what she does, she goes straight up to the Shattered Ravines, as I said. Up here you will need, um... Oh, that's smart. Um, she's using fleeting stability to stop um stop her from getting knocked down uh from signet of judgment. But if you don't have that, um you need to use I am unstoppable. So up here she'll be going through the shadow ravines. Here I had to edit the video, um, because the um the runs kind of got messed up, um, so 
but yeah um, this I reorganized it so this is the correct um, order of what you have to run so shower ravines um, this part's pretty insane okay you want to go up there and then um after you get through that um marganite sorcerers so marganites you need shadow form up so you can just uh shadow step to them to speed up time and from here you are there pretty much so uh, that's the zone to the alkali pen. From here, she'll be going south. Like I said, I had to edit the video, so I'm sorry if it's not like completely fluid. But yeah, <laughs> everybody just instantly died. Um, so from here, she's going to be going out there, and here you'll see um, what I meant specifically on how there's um, little gaps. Uh, there's little safe spots, I guess you could say, at um, in the middle of the sulfurous waste. Uh, she had a little bit of a mess up here, um, crippling anguish. Uh, it's not a big deal though. She'll be fine. So you can see here she's staying to the side but up here you can see she's using all the safe spots that you see around here um they're really hard to see at the beginning so i'd highly recommend the text mod i uh uh talked about in the intro part of this guide um i would definitely download that for the first few uh for practicing in the first few runs until you get the the areas of safe spots completely down so she is nearing the bone palace and uh i think i mentioned that they she wouldn't be covering the bone palace but um i was wrong so uh sorry about that so after that, um, this is how you get to Ruins of Mora. Remember what I said, you want to keep everybody to the left side of um, the, s the spawn point because you do not want them to activate the Resurrection Shrine over there. If you do that, you will not be able to complete the run. You'll see a little uh, later in this part. So here she's using the um, um, safe spots again as you can see and here okay she goes through up here through the grid monoliths which have a um, uh, crippling anguish which you saw before so you want shadow form for those and these guys are heavy hitters you need I am unstoppable for those guys because they have signet of judgment and up here this is a really awesome part so I'll probably pause it in this area uh, what you need to learn is that there's a resurrection shrine within the runes of more area you can see it on the mission map right now um, so what the runner does is it w they walk up straight into the wall that they see the wall of like torment or whatever um, that activates the resurrection shrine so from there um, you kill yourself and then you'll be resurrected onto the resurrection shrine as you will see here she dies uh, resurrection up here and um, another thing you need to note you'll need a degeneration skill uh, the most used one is enduring or yeah enduring toxin that is because you need to be able to um, destroy the obelisk the uh, the colossus or whatever to be able to get into the ruins of mora 
and you'll see it right here um, if you put uh, the Colossus is invulnerable to damage so you'll need a gene generation spell as you see here so you just degenerate it until it dies Which takes a little while, but it's okay. There you go. Now it's dead. And now she can run. Um, she can run into the ruins of Mora. And I believe, yeah, that's all you can cover in uh, the desolation. So I hope this run or this video has helped you. Um, this remember, this is a very very hard run to master. So just keep trying, just keep practicing. It'll get very frustrating, but eventually, once you complete it, you'll feel so good about it. And this run, this uh, these runs can net you a lot of money. Um, like I remember, Miss Dervish uh, was talking about how. Um, a person wanted to get run to um, Bone Palace from Kamadon. Oh no, not Kamadon. Um, Sunspear Sanctuary, and he asked, or she, he, the person that she was going to run, uh, offered a hundred k for it. So you can get a lot of money from it. So please rate, comment, subscribe, uh, favorite this video. Um, if you have any questions, like I said, comment down below. Or PM me, Miss Dervish, or God of Fissures uh, about it. Um, so, other than that, I think, yeah, have a nice day, and I hope this helped you.